Two eight. Now the commentary done by Diggity. Twelve o'clock location. We have Sterling starting as the Black Terran. Bottom right corner. We got Balance starting as the Teal Zerg. This is Starcon twenty twenty four. Losers round one or lower. I, I prefer calling it the lower bracket. Lower bracket round one. Because everybody is a winner here. Let's be honest. Uh, I was actually thinking about so. Uh, Overlord making its way to the bottom left hand corner. This is on Apocalypse. It is a best of one. So pressure's on for both these guys. It was funny, I hadn't la logged into League of Legends for a considerable period of time. And finally did and noted that like now on the profile you can see what League people are in there because League and points and that sort of thing are very, very important, right? And how we should qualify one another. Eh? It's, the, it's where we can be like, ah, you're the... That's why I don't like saying the loser's bracket. This, honestly, if you play Brood War and you get to like this level, where you can even compete in a tournament like this, you're a winner. That's what I'm trying to get at. There's more than just records and whatever, the higher cause, blah, 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 all that sort of crap. I feel like the tournament exemplified that, which is part of the reason I enjoy. I think that's why I enjoy this tournament so much, is it's not just like, let's see who's the best so that we can attach our ego to that person, as though we are cool too. Um, it's more, uh, it's more, you know, this is the game we're passionate about and I don't know. I'm just rambling now. So you guys get a ramble commentary on top. That wasn't even a rant. Like, it wasn't cohesive enough to be a rant. But I think you guys get the gist of what I'm saying. Um, anyway, speaking of all that stuff, I found out that people are being hard on Riot Freak. Freak, I would consider uh, someone I know and a good dude. Someone I know. An acquaintance of friends. I like that guy. I... Actually, he's the guy who got me into him and another guy named uh, Ironic Hero got me into League of Legends very, very early. And I knew it was going to be a success specifically because of those two guys. So I feel like now to hear that the community is giving him such a hard time, I feel like that speaks to the negativity in that space, which makes me sad. Hopefully it can turn itself around. Anyway, 12 Hatch uh, Spawning Pool Extractor dropped. This is the timing to go for potential Mutalisk play. Sternly in the meantime, getting a good eyeful of it. Free, free freak. Rattle the fist. Anyway, um, for all of the people that really, really care. In the meantime, gasless. No marine into command center opposite side upon seeing that that uh, 12 hatch or 11 hatch. Probably 11 hatch. Drone getting a little bit of damage done on that SCV and going to play, play ring around the rosy uh, with this one, which I actually want to look up the history of that one and also pop... Goes the weasel. This is like dad speak talking. I know they have history behind these things. Man, it's a ranty replay. But anyway, no larva left. So Sterling might even be able to skip some. If he is right on top of it, could even skip additional Marines. And it looks like he is, in fact, skipping additional Marines. This is, oh, he's going for. Okay, so going for a second barracks right off the bat. So no academy, uh, no engineering bay. Just going to go into second barracks. He does have the. One problem with leaving that SCV out is that sometimes they can just move slightly out of vision and create some havoc with uh, barracks and things like that, but, or a bunker, I should say, and things like that, or maybe even go after some drones. But right now, four Zerglings have been produced. Nice surround on the SCV thus so far, but nice little adjustment there. But he's going to get a very, very good look at the layer timing. And so Sterling, in a pretty good position, has been able to skip at least a few initial Marines to get production up as quickly as possible. And it looks like it is going to be two racks Academy play. So going for a potential threat on the front. Nice metering of the SCV. So gas is up. Second barracks is going to be up shortly. Looks like the Zerglings were, or the Zerg, yeah, that Zergling got the kill. Zerglings were able to dispatch the um, scouting SCV finally. Balance is going to go ahead and drop that Spire right around the four minute mark. So the timer is ticking to get additional anti-air up for Sterling. Um, so Academy be up a little bit single idle SV, but this is really good actually. So up the, doing a pretty good job uh, here. Once, I'm curious if this is gonna be, yeah, it looks like, oop, accidentally attacking the command center. I, I The Marines just warming up their barrels. They know they're gonna get feisty out in the field and wanna go attack something. So I think they're staging it to potentially do so. In the meantime, the Zerglings have spread out, checking the high ground. Balance already sending out a third drone before even the Spire's finished to go ahead and establish that potential third base, which is a bit risky. Double comms hat center drop. We got a dangerous ball of medic marines. Usually at the two the two racks to start. Okay, there's the fire bat. So I was, uh, I've, I guess I'm more accustomed to pro gamers and sometimes they'll do it with six marines, sometimes eight marines. They'll do it off time and they don't usually wait for the fire bats uh, to go just to throw the Zerg a little bit off. But this is going to be the pure timing. And right now balance 
going to be able to scout it with that first Zergling. Should be obligated to drop at least two. So, and a comp set there from Sterling as well to say, okay, did you dedicate the creep colonies? Did you get them really, really rapidly? Because we're going to have two creep colonies drop. One advantage of doing this is sometimes you can force, uh, depending on the Mutalisk timing, what you can do is you, if they build Mutalisks and they're not there in time, you can get a shot into that natural expansion and kill a few drones. Because if they just go straight Mutalisks and no Zerglings, they're not in time to support exactly like we're seeing here. So first sunken colony down. Second sunken colony is gonna is not going to stand up against all of these units. No zerglings have been produced, and the nice play though by balance to preemptively get rid of that natural expansion. A single fire bat moving in to go ahead and tax the AP uh, the APM here of balance, and that hatchery is going to get taken out as well. So balance by being overly ambitious, putting this hatchery here bottom left, not building sufficient zerglings on that move out and also not getting the necessary sunk colonies out rapidly enough. And I gotta say, bonus to Sterling for getting the comp set and saying you were a little bit too late and moving out. So he, he ends up, he'll, he'll probably end up losing this group of Medic Marine, but obviously has done sufficient damage where it just puts him in a fantastic situation. Every drone kill on top of this or mutilous damage is just bonus at this stage. So nice play. From Sterling, it looks like that army finally cleaned up. But in the meantime, he's already got going to factory, interesting. So he's got the engineering bay up. He does need to get so he's got a turret up. I'm surprised he didn't go up to three barracks. Uh factory is sub seven minutes. So gonna stick this is playing this a little bit risky now. So we'll see. So the mutalisks are moving out. There are seven mutalisks here. It's not plus one weapons. Uh balance is basically gonna have to be all in with the Mutalist play. So Bounce does have a way to win this now because this is not a lot of Medic Marines to fight this off. And this was not a glut of turrets to defend otherwise. So Natural Expansion has been popped open. You do have a base here bottom left. Some drones actually getting a uh, Miss Rally here from Balance. Fortunately for Sterling, it's basically, it's kind of a pseudo one base play rather than two. Finally moving his Medic Marines in the forward position. But some nice micro here from Balance. Yeah, we'll get some damage done. He's going to have to send those drones. The drones just wanted to venture and see the, the front of battle. That's also a bit of tournament nerds playing there. Finally, uh, there was a window there, I think, for balance if he stuck with it. Backed off, I think, to micro. Or to, I should say, macro a little bit. Which I don't fault him for. Honestly, he's playing a lot better than I would in this uh, scenario by, like, miles. Um, but looks like the mutals are going to get cleaned up. There's plenty of turrets now. There was that nice breathing room in between. And so now Sterling in a fantastic economic situation. The starport's going to get up. He's dropping that third bar third barracks a little bit later than usual. And I'm a little bit concerned about this. Is a Zergling all in with the mules to support? Because now we got a lot of turrets. But we only got three Marines on the ground. So this could be a threat. The SCVs are potentially going to need to defend themselves. They do have medics, which actually makes them surprisingly powerful. But Zerglings, with Zergling speed moving forward. And if they just charge the barracks line, so they're going to... If they just group up, charge the bear, uh, the line and avoid that fire... So the fire bat's down. They're working on the turrets, unfortunately. I think if they just ignored all this and walked in the natural expansion, it would have been fine. A vulture out to provide some additional support. A wraith being produced as well to provide a little bit of anti-air. And unfortunately for these zerglings, these are SCVs with medic support. Exclamation point. And there's also that vulture nearby to go ahead and clear it up. The wraith popping out. To try to provide some additional anti-air. Uh, I'm wondering if the armory just got skipped in Sterling's build order. I'm guessing that is the scenario here. The Wraith going to help support the SCVs in their cleanup effort. But still, this is a really nice economy here for Sterling overall. It looks like that natural expansion hat, or I should say the natural, that second base, now second base, has been saturated. The bunker still getting constructed. The Marines able to get in the bunker now. And balance recognizing it just wasn't going to be enough. But a good effort, I gotta say. Slight mistakes in Brood War can be extraordinarily punishing. And this is a prime example of that. Great play from Sterling. He will advance, unfortunately. Balance is knocked out. But as I ranted towards the beginning, I still consider him a winner in my book. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.